Now that we have uh, seen all the 10 different possible agents of deterioration of cultural heritage, we have to um, start assessing the risk. And that means that we have to calculate the uh, variables that can um, happen for a risk. And when we have to calculate the risk, we have to take into consideration two different variables. The first one is the probability of happening of a particular threat. And it could be very high if it is very probable that the event will take place in that particular building. Uh, and also it could be that because we are aware of similar events that uh, have occurred in the last years in that particular building or in that particular area. For example, think about earthquakes or floodings. It could be medium uh, if the event is possible, but there are no similar cases in the history of that particular place. Or it could be low if it is um, a low probability that the event will occur and there are no similar cases in that um, particular area. And then the second uh, variable is the impact that that threat could have if it happens. Uh, on the assets that we are analyzing, obviously. It could be high if the event can produce structural damage and um, severely compromise the stored assets, for example, with a complete destruction or a very severe effect. Uh, it could be medium if the event could pr produce structural damage and partially compromise the assets, or it could be low, uh, so the event will produce only minor uh, damage without compromising the um, life cycle of the stored uh, assets. So when we have to calculate the risk, we will have to do a product between two, those two variables, the probability and the impact, and that's it. And we will find the number that it's related to that particular risk. And to do a visual representation of the different risks that threaten a particular asset, we can use a risk matrix. Basically, uh, depending on the number that we obtain by the product of probability and impact, we will have different areas of this graph. We will have a green area where the uh, risk is not so uh, urgent and should not be mitigated, should, but should be controlled and monitored. We will have a yellow area where we should um, do some mitigation measures to uh, prevent those risks, or we, we can have a red area when we have the most urgent risk where we should absolutely um, put in place some mitigation uh, measures to uh, protect the assets from that particular risk. So um, as you can see here, we will have a green area where we decide that the risk is acceptable. So the mitigation measures that are put in place are adequate or we do not have to put in place any more mitigation measures. The yellow area, the risk is acceptable, but um, we should put in place some mitigation measures that could be improved. Where while in the red area, the risk is not acceptable at all, and we should evaluate further mitigation measure that we should put in place, and this is the most urgent risk we should focus on. So once we have assessed the risk and we have calculated uh, it, and we have uh, found the most important, the most urgent risk we should um, tackle, uh, now it's starting to uh, put in place our mitigation measures to try to uh, reduce the potential impact that that particular risk could have on the protected assets. The mitigation measures could be very different from one to another, depending on the situation of the building, depending on the assets, depending on the uh, specific uh, scenarios and vulnerabilities of the areas. But we can find like 
three main areas of mitigation uh, measures. We have structural mitigation measures um, that obviously are uh, directed to the um, structure of the building or the structure of the shelves and um, nails and everything that keeps the yeah. assets in place. For example, uh, obviously we will have to strengthen the building structure, uh, we will have to improve the climate control or we have to put in place some uh, design procedures to uh, that are other resistant for specific assets. Then there is another area which is related to the emergency management. So all the activities that we can put in place to improve the overall preparedness of a um, cultural heritage institution to respond to an emergency and so we will have educations um, that could be uh, theoretical and practical with drills and exercises community involvement and all the activities related to this disaster preparedness <clears throat> that could be put in place in case of emergency and the last area is all of the activities related to preventive conservations. So this is uh, more uh, in charge of restorers and conservators inside cultural heritage institutions. And that are all the possible conservation strategies that we can put in place on a particular asset to protect it um, from the risks um, that are threatening it. So we are talking about an um, overall uh, more efficient conservation strategies that could be put in place inside a cultural heritage institution. There is a very important thing when we think about this topic. We tend to perceive mitigation measures as something that it's very expensive because we always think about the uh, techn technological like appliances like CCTVs, something very expensive and very big that a museum should buy. Uh, but it's not always true because there are many, many different activities that can be put in place by a museum or um, archive or a library that can improve very much the overall um, risk level and that do not require any budget at all. So this is very important that are some there are some common senses activities that should be put in place and uh, that they do not require any budget. Another very important uh, activity is to prioritize when we talk about risk analysis, because obviously we won't be able to um, eliminate every single risk and to reduce every single risk. So we have to try to understand which ones are the most urgent uh, because of the vulnerabilities of the assets that we are preserving, as well as because of the um, overall uh, situation context in which the cultural heritage is preserved. So a very important tool, and this is um, uh, basically a list of all the mitigation measures that should be implemented as soon as possible to mitigate the risks that we have um, calculated. And these uh, mitigation measures should be ordered for from the most urgent to the least urgent. And this is super important. And this is super useful for a cultural heritage institution because the operators can understand which are the activities that they should put in place right away and which are the ones that could be um, that could be planned with a little bit more um, time. So a risk treatment plan is a fundamental tool for planning the investment over time, as well as for delaying the risk mitigation efforts, because as we have seen, they could be very um, expensive or they could um, use a lot of resources. And um, the most important thing is that proactive risk management can help very much safeguarding our cultural treasures for the future generation. And you don't always need very expensive and very huge activities to mitigate risks. Sometimes they are like very simple activities uh, coming from the common sense. So uh, it's very important to be um, aware of the vulnerabilities of the risks um, 
and to understand which are the most urgent and how we could potentially um, have an impact to try to reduce their um, their damage uh, on the assets. So thank you very, very much for your attention and enjoy the rest of the course.